I'll tell you what, I'll tell you a story about my big, one of the, one of the largest bucks I've ever shot. Uh, if you're into the tape measure, he's probably the most tape measure friendly buck for sure I've ever shot. But I've never put anything in a record book, whatever. So, um, years ago, I went hunting with this guy. I was just, I was just kind of new to the Whistler, Squamish, Pemberton areas. And uh, I went hunting with this guy and he took this place. And it was snow on the ground and it was really thick and nasty. And he said that it used to be really good until it grew up. He said, it's too thick. It's too thick to hunt around here. I'm like, really? It's like, yeah, it's just, it's too thick. I'm not hunting here. Let's get out of here. But I'd looked on the ground and I noticed, I noticed this uh, deer print. And being from Vancouver Island and, and more accustomed to hunting those, you know, 120 pound bucks, I seen this print in the ground. I just about fell over. I'm like, are you kidding me? Did you see that buck print? It's freaking huge. And I'll never forget that moment. And uh, this guy that I was hunting with, he wasn't uh, wasn't too concerned about it. So we left, but I never forgot about that. I'd go guiding for a few months, and then I would come back and and run the odd job construction in uh, Whistler. But I was really had the travel bug, and I'd have my stuff in storage back then. And, and I'd go rattle off a job in Whistler, and then I'd just take off. So I wasn't really big into hunting there yet. And then uh, when I started living there full time, I went straight back to that zone and I started hunting the way I normally hunt. And uh, sure enough, there's these monster, monster footprints around that area. I started leaving my truck quite a ways away from where I was hunting. And I'd hike in there, it's just a habit. I started hunting the tracks. I didn't even have a trail camera then. I really hunted hard and I ended up, I think it was the second year hunting that area hard. I shot a couple other bucks my first year there, meat deer. I wasn't even I wasn't even familiar with how big bucks got around there. I knew there, there's some, there's, I knew that one buck was gonna be huge. And I shot a pretty big buck and I knew the head CO at the time, Chris Doyle, he came driving up and I was coming out of the hills with this buck on my truck in my truck. And I uh, said, Whoa, that's a good one. I'm like, yeah, is it really? I have a clue. This would be a monster from the island, but some of the tracks I'm seeing there's some big deer on here and he goes, No, that's a pretty good buck. That is big old big big three point but then I, but those tracks just drove me up up the wall so I went back there the next year so now we're year two and sure enough it started dumping snow and I started learning started learning more and more and more hiking farther out hiking farther up really starting to learn that whole mountain and boom there's monster buck tracks chasing doe tracks he's, you can see he's dogging her in the in the timber thick bush real thick you only see about 50 yards and he's dogging her running around all over the place so I started trailing him and I could see where he was making rubs but we're talking like a stick like this he'd make a rub on that where we would normally see a tiny rub like that and think oh it's just a tiny buck hmm. no you know sure you can see a big rub in the timber on the willow big massive nasty rub and obviously it's a mature rack but uh these bucks they are responsible for those teeny weeny rubs too trust me I followed that buck and do around for about three hours and uh, he probably made about six or seven rubs in that time. And he was just chasing that doe and dogging her and chasing her and running her in circles. And then finally, oh, there they are. They're about 40 yards in front of me, looking at me. I'm like, oh my God, this great big six by seven or something. And uh, one of the bucks, the largest black tails I'd ever seen in my life at the time. And I couldn't get the shot off. You know, she took one look at me, whoops, and she booked it. And he didn't seem too concerned about me because obviously nobody really hunted around there in that thick crap. And uh, they took off. Saw me, took off. I'm like, oh my God, you gotta be kidding me. What did I do? I left because, because they'd seen me, you know, and I didn't want them to leave. She's hot. I wanted them to hopefully think I'm a mushroom picker, whatever, a tree spacer, anything. But I did not want them to think that I was there to kill them and eat them and I knew they would be there tomorrow. And I didn't want to go, it was just too thick. I couldn't risk going after them because I'm not, there wasn't an open area to push them out into and shoot them. So I needed to leave. I left, killed me, but I left. And then I came back in. I remember I went to the local hunting store and I told them flat out that afternoon. I said, I will have a, a monster Boone and Crockett black tailed deer in here before noon tomorrow. Mark my words, it will be dead and I'll have it here tomorrow. And I said that. So I left, I went home, could barely sleep. I got up early in the morning in the dark and uh, I hiked up into there. I got into that one little clearing exactly where I last saw them. And I sat there and I kept my eyes closed and I opened my eyes, hoping for that night vision to come 
you just want it to get light out. I couldn't see enough. You had to close my eyes, open them up. I'm starting to see things, but I couldn't quite see enough to see antler in front of me at 40 yards. And then uh, as soon as I was confident I could see antler, I thought I could see antler, I tipped my can collar straight and rattled the horns a bit. Here comes this thing from my left and I couldn't make it out through the willow and he's grunting his face off and he goes from my left to my right and out of sight at about 40, 50 yards and it was just too early. I just went high and nervous breakdown. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like I couldn't even see my crosshairs properly. I just couldn't do it. 40 yards, 50 yards. And then uh, it wasn't probably 10 minutes later, there is not a doubt in my mind I could smoke that sucker if I seen him again. So then I cut loose with the antlers and the can and here he, here he came bouncing right back in front of me. Here's a picture of him where he lay dead. You can see this thick stuff and I smoked him at about uh, 30, 35 years. He came up from my dead center and came back and I shot him. It was like a 142 inch buck or something, whatever he had on him, great big buck. You can see him here in the picture. So I'm all stoked. I drug him out, threw him in the truck, took him down, showed him off to everybody, and I hung him up and I'm cutting him up. And I looked at his feet and I'm like, and I actually cut one of his foot, one of his feet off, and I pressed it in the snow at home. I'm like, that's not the buck I've been after. There's no way that is the buck that owns the footprints that I've been after. It's not him. It's not him. Game on.